Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Increasing Lifetime Value with Predictive Analytics, Part 1, Getting New Customers, Acquisition Stage. I am Megan Souza, Marketing Manager here with Dunn Solutions Group. And before we get started, I would like to go over a few items. This session will be recorded and we will send out a link to the recording to everyone who registered within 24 to 48 hours after the presentation. We also have recordings of all previous webinars on our website in the event that you missed any in the past at dunnsolutions.com. Also, if you have any questions during today's presentation, we encourage you to submit them and we'll address as many as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If the question is somewhat complex and we need more time to answer, we do promise to follow up with you for those. So let's take a look at today's agenda. I will begin by doing introductions to Den Solutions Group. From there, I will turn it over to today's presenter, Francesco Squanchi, Predictive Analytics Lead here with Dunn Solutions Group. He will discuss the customer journey and increasing lifetime value in the acquisition stage. He will then do a demonstration of Jake's groceries. After that, we will wrap up the presentation and let you get on to your workday. So let's get started. Dunn Solutions has a long history of delivering innovative business technology solutions to companies. We are headquartered just outside of Chicago and have offices in Minneapolis, Raleigh, and Bangalore, India. Dunn Solutions is a digital commerce and business transformation consultancy focused on delivering velocity to our clients. Velocity is achieved by the combination of both speed and direction. Dunn Solutions helps our clients achieve speed by automating business processes and direction using advanced analytics. Our teams align with organizations to optimize their unique processes and help them discover the most profitable routes to business success. Dunn Solutions works with our clients to create a virtuous cycle with e-commerce. Massive amounts of data are collected by e-commerce websites. Our experts take that data and apply analytics to apply promotions, segment, cross-sell, and upsell, then push that data into marketing automation platforms to strategically send those messages to your customers and potential customers to drive more sales. We call this the virtuous velocity cycle. Our clients, some of which are included here, are a combination of Fortune 500, mid-market companies, government agencies, and nonprofits across all verticals. About 80% of our business are commercial clients, and 20% are nonprofit and government. Thank you for allowing me to introduce you to Dunn Solutions Group. I will now hand over the presentation to Francesco. Welcome, Francesco. Well, thank you, Megan. So let's talk about the customer journey. Before customers start generating revenue for a company, they really go through a journey that has two main stages. The first stage is the pre-engagement. Basically, the customer is not even a customer yet, and he or she is a subject. And awareness and consideration happen at this very stage. Now, although the previous stage is very important, it isn't until the subject is acquired that he or she becomes valuable to us and that's the engagement stage. The engagement stage has four phases. It has an acquisition, retention, loyalty, and advocacy phase. And value creation happens at every phase. But how is value measured? Through customer lifetime value. And what's customer lifetime value? Well, in its most basic form, it's just a formula. It's the summation of future profits from newly acquired customers plus additional profits from the existing customers, minus the profits lost to people that, are leave, that left, and minus the cost of marketing. Now, the first component of the CLTV formula happens entirely at acquisition. So that's the phase we will be focusing on today. To maximize profits from new customers, we first need to maximize the number, the number of new acquisitions. And budget constraints stop us from targeting everybody. So we need to be efficient and to find a way to target only the right people. But who are the right people? Well, it's those people that are most likely to respond and predict, predictive analytics can help, uh, can help us find them. Let's see how this is done in practice through a real case study. So Jake's is a client that came to Dunn Solutions with the problem. 
They are an online grocery store and they operate mainly in New York. And every year they run a major acquisition direct mail campaign. And they run it during springtime and then they evaluate how effective the campaign was um, at the end of the year. Now, Jake's purchases uh, a large data set of 950,000 prospects from an external provider. And historically, they have been able to target about 15% of these people, but with very little science backing up the selection process. Now, currently, their customer lifetime value when they came to us was 2,900, or um, which was a 10.7% decrease from last year. So, taking a look at their operations, we saw that Jake's was able to target about 149 people per year, and over a three-year period, they acquired 7,000 people. That's an acquisition rate of 1.61% per year. Now, the churn rate, however, was 4.75%, and resulted in a loss of customer uh, of 13,000 customers. So over the three year period, the customer base dropped from 97,000 to about 91,000, which is a 6.2% decrease in customer base. So let's take a look at how we created the model and how we helped them um, acquire new clients. So let's take a look step by step at how we created the acquisition model. This is really a classification kind of problem because we're really trying to predict two classes, buyers and non-buyers. So let's point to the file that contains the list of people that, we, uh, that were targeted during a previous campaign and all the variables of interest, such as whether or not they responded to that campaign, the age, the income, and so forth. Now, it is important that we do data hygiene prior to any attempt at modeling. Here, I don't see any missing values, and that's great. I also want to take a look at the data to make sure that everything looks fine. So let's click on that. And if everything looks good and it seems to be fine, we can move on. Once again, what's our goal? Our goal is to predict who's going to respond to the new campaign based on historical information. So that's the variable that we're really interested in. So let's move it over. And let's get rid of all the variables that should not be, should not be used for prediction, such as zip codes or, um, in this case, customer ID. If the analyst is the brain, then good software should be the muscle and do most of the heavy lifting. So in this case, I want to make sure that I enable automatic variable selection. I want to make sure that the model selects only the best variables for me. The traditional approach to modeling takes weeks. With software automation, it can take hours. Now, that frees up a lot of the data scientist time and also put some of the predictive power in the hands of non-data scientists. So we can see that in just under a minute, we were able to generate a model of 149,000 um, observations. 75% of that data were used to train the model, and 25% of them were used to test the accuracy. Now, we have to note that historical response rate was 1.63%. Now, let's take a look at the variables that made it in and what their contribution was. These are the variables that were selected by the model, ranked by in order of importance. And we can click on any of them to see their impact and the response rates. So let's click on age groups 60 to 64. So we can see that this group has a negative impact on the score. And in plain English, that means that people age 60 to 64 are less likely to respond to a direct mail campaign. But please remember, this can be overgeneralized. This is true only for this company and this specific product. So now the question becomes, how good is the model really? Well, the chart provides the answer. 
we know that Jake's only had enough money to target 15% of the people on their list. If they did it at random, then they should expect to get 15% of all the people that they would have gotten by targeting all 950,000 prospects. It's the law of random numbers, which is what the red line uh, represents. So once again, target 15% of the population at random and expect 15% of all possible buyers, however many that number is. However, by using the model, they can expect to get 32% of all the buyers that they would have gotten had they had the budget to target all 950,000 people. That means 2.2 times better than random selection. So moving on, now that we have a model, let's use it to score the new prospects for the next campaign. Let's apply the model. And once again, we're going to need a file that has the names of the new people and all the same variables that were used to create the initial model. We also want to make sure that the output file contains some way to identify who the, the offer should be sent to. So in this case, let's use customer ID. And let's select the destination folder where we want to save the output file. And let's give it a name such as scores. So keeping in mind that we have 950,000 people and that we're doing this live, we can see that in just a matter of seconds, we were able to score over 950,000 names. Now the output file will be created in the folder that in the destination we selected, and that's the file name. And if we take a look, you can see that the, that the file contains the names of each customer as well as their probability score. So now all that the marketing department needs to do is to select the people with the highest scores and just target them for the new campaign. Now, before we go into the results, that's exactly what our client did. And we will show you how they performed. But first, let me introduce you to the Setter Spargus Fairy. Now, Paribus has superpowers. He makes all things stay the same. And that's really key if the model is to perform as expected when it's applied to new data. The historical response rate, we said, was 1.61%. We told the client that by using the model, 99% of the time, their response would fall between 2.86% and 4.71% with the help of parables. How did we actually do? So in the current year, we reversed the negative trend of the previous three years, and for the first time, customer base grew 0.7%. The response rate was 2.64%, and that's one full percentage point better than the previous year. And in the world of direct, uh, direct mail campaign, that's a lot of responses. That being said, 2.64% was less than our lower confidence limit. And so why? Why did that happen? Well, Paribus did not do a very good job of keeping all things the same. In fact, last year, last year's campaign uh, had $50 uh, in free groceries at sign up. And this year, it advertised um, one month free delivery. So was last year's uh, offer better than this year's? Well, 
I cannot answer that question without a little bit of market research or promotional analysis, but what I can tell you is that all things were not held constant. So lesson learned, with predictive analytics, you're able to maximize customer acquisitions, so you optimize the marketing spend in what is the most expensive customer lifetime stage. Now back to Megan. Thank you, Francesco. That was a great presentation. Just wanted to step in for one moment and say that we are offering a free customer acquisition with predictive analytics assessment. This assessment will cover two free hours of consulting with our predictive analytics like Francesco here. We will discuss the needs of customer acquisition with predictive analytics in your organization and we develop a strategy of how to implement that and get you going in optimizing your own customer acquisition stage. Um, also, I would like to invite all of you to join us for the second part of this series, um, Retention, where we, we discuss how to optimize the retention stage of the customer lifetime value um, with predictive analytics for that stage. Thank you. So next time, we will be discussing how to retain customers. The next step in the value creation equation is to increase profits from the active customers. So. In order for us to increase profits, we're going to have to retain the customers. And uh, next time we'll show how predictive analytics can aid in detecting who as well as why is a risk of churning so that we can take corrective actions before it's too late. So please join us for the next webinar. Thank you all. I'll make sure anyone that joined the webinar today will receive the link for the upcoming webinar. And again, for any that you've missed in the past, please join us at dunsolutions.com where you can find the remainder of those as well. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope to see you in the future webinars. Thank you, Francesco, for your presentation.